Hello everyone. Welcome to this online tutorial on the introduction to warehouse structure in SAP warehouse management. In this tutorial, we would start with discussing the need of a warehouse management system. We would then move on to understand the structure of a warehouse in SAP system. We would also understand what are storage types, what are storage sections, what are storage bins. And then of course, at the end, we would again have a look at a sample warehouse structure. And finally, towards the end of the presentation, we would try to create this sample warehouse structure also in SAP. So that would be more of a demo straight in the SAP system. To start with, uh, let's try to understand the situation of a hypothetical plant. Let's uh, call it plant one, two, three. Let's say this plant has to deal with three different types of materials. It stores the products that it manufactures in the finished goods section. Uh, it also has to manage an inventory of raw materials to manufacture its finished products. And then it also maintains a very small inventory of spare parts so that it can service uh, the products whatever have been already sold to the customer. Okay, from inventory management perspective, let's say this plant maintains these three different types of materials in three separate storage locations. Let's call them storage location one, two, and three for spare parts, raw material, and finished goods respectively. Okay, so talking about the inventory management, when we do not have SAP WM, we can check how much stock of a particular material do we have under one plant. And the smallest level until which we can actually drill down the stock situation is the storage location. So for that matter, in this example, I can check how many spare parts do I have in the story location one, how much of the raw materials do I have in story location two, and how many finished goods do I have in the story location three. But can I go any further? Using only inventory management, it's not possible. So the lowest possible level at which I can do a stock management, inventory management, is the story location. Now, to understand the situation a little better, let's talk about this story location three from our example, which is meant to uh, store the finished goods. Let's say this organization actually uses high racks to store the finished goods. And these three uh, pieces from this example might be scattered uh, over different bins within this racking uh, arrangement. And this rack actually in reality might be something like this or maybe even more complex. And these three pieces can actually be present in these three bins which are highlighted with this uh, red dot. Now this becomes very obvious that uh, let's say whenever we have an order from a customer for this finished product and then when we have to create a delivery and do the picking, it's really very difficult to exactly locate these pieces in this, in this uh, racking structure. When we ask inventory management, it can only tell us that you have three pieces somewhere in this rack, but it does not tell us exactly where do we have to go to do this picking. So locating the right material when required becomes a very big challenge if we are using only inventory management. And how do we solve it? The answer is, of course, we have to go one level further and we have to implement a warehousing solution. When we say we have to go for a warehousing solution, what do we mean? Okay, I'm, I'm calling it warehousing solution because SAP is not the only option. An organization can actually opt for going for any other warehousing solution available in the market. But when we say, let's say we, we opt SAP WM as the solution uh, for warehousing for us, what does it actually mean? It means that we uh, decide that one of these storage locations under one plant would be maintained as a warehouse in the system. So in this example, we decide that the storage location three meant for finished goods would now be managed as a warehouse because it's not enough for us to maintain our inventory only until the storage location. We have to have a little more granularity in the system. So we decide that, okay, this is going to be a warehouse. And technically, what does it mean in SAP system? It means that we create a warehouse, we give it some name. So let's say W01. And then we assign this warehouse to the combination of the plant and the storage location in question. And how does it help? As we have discussed, if we are using only inventory management, we know how much do we have at the plant level and how much of this stock is actually available in the storage location. But if we have warehouse management implemented, 
we can also drill down all the way to the bin level so we know there are three pieces at the plant level we know these three pieces are available actually in the store location three and because this is store location three is now also a warehouse we know that these three pieces are actually available in bin one bin two and let's say bin one thousand okay so coming to the interesting part of this tutorial we will now talk about the warehouse structure in sap system so this graphic actually represents the hierarchy in which different elements are maintained in an sap warehouse structure so at the top we have a warehouse a warehouse is then divided among multiple storage types each storage type then can be divided among multiple storage sections and then finally under these storage sections we create something called storage bins so this is the structure that we maintain in warehouse it's also important to mention that we also have something called picking area uh, but this is not mandatory this we can totally do away with uh, a picking area so as of now we have not shown that as a part of this warehouse structure but it's important to at least make a note that yes there's also something called picking area okay so now we would try to understand all these elements a little more in detail starting with the storage type what do we actually mean by storage type so for that we again call back the same graphic from the opening slide uh, if you remember uh, this part uh, highlighted with this blue frame was actually the storage location 3 which is meant for finished goods and now we also have discussed that because of our logistics challenges we have decided to manage this part of our physical facility as a warehouse and let's say we would call it w01 okay now within this boundary within this blue frame where we maintain finished goods we can identify different zones depending on different criteria so for example uh, in some part of this physical facility we might be storing the finished goods in high racks right uh, and let's say we also decide that within this high racks we would never mix up different materials within one bin so this part might have its own characteristics or the way the material is stored uh, in this part of the warehouse for example we can also decide that within this part uh, only the fragile finished goods would be in the lowermost two levels and all of the regular stock would go uh, in, the, in the higher levels right so this kind of decisions might be made specific to this part of the warehouse and then this can be actually defined as a storage type within my warehouse so i will say that I have warehouse W01. Within this warehouse W01, I have a storage type called Hyrex. Similar to that, I might have something called fixed bin. I mean, these are just examples. There are many more possibilities, but just to understand that, uh, you know, what, what do we actually mean by storage type? So we can also have, uh, let's say, one corner where we have a uh, few bins, which are uh, fixed bins for my materials. So uh, a material would always and always be stored in. A particular bin so if we have that kind of a behavior uh, of the storage in some part we can define that as a different storage type because then it would have its own uh, controls in the system it would have its own it it, it will it will have its own uh, behavior in the system similar to that we can also have uh, something called open area where let's say we would allow to uh, mix my uh, materials so we can have different finished goods lying in the same storage bin in, in the open area okay So if we uh, come back to the definition of storage type, this is how we can define it in words. Storage type is a physical or logical subdivision of a warehouse complex that is characterized by its warehouse technique, the space used, its organizational form or its function. So something like uh, something very similar to what we just discussed in the previous slide. So uh, as we said that uh, within the high rex, we may decide that we would never mix up the stock within one bin So you would only have the homogeneous situation. You would never find two different materials lying in the same bin So that kind of control specific to a particular zone within the warehouse can be done using the storage types And as we said the storage types have control functions So two different warehouses can have totally two different behaviors and just to give you a feel uh, Here's a picture of high rack from a mid-sized warehouse this is how uh, high rack might look like and this is a picture for a bulk storage and this is how possibly an open storage in a warehouse could look like so you allow mixing different materials they all lie together 
here so because of different organizational needs coming to the next level which is a storage section so let's say uh, within the storage type hirex uh, as we have discussed that the organization uses hirex to store the finished goods and let's say uh, in this slide what we are looking at is one of the racks okay and so uh, one requirement from the organization is that whenever we store the finished goods in this part of the warehouse we have to ensure that only the fragile items are stored in the lower most two levels and other regular non-fragile items can be stored in the uh, higher levels the obvious uh, the, the reason is quite obvious that we, we want to avoid any damage uh, which might be made to the fragile items if we have to handle them using the forklifts or different storing uh, techniques so we just want to simply handle them with with hands and due to that we have the limitation that we have to store them only and only in the lower most two levels right so this kind of requirement can be handled in sap by using something called storage sections within one storage type so something like this that we see in the picture coming back to the definition of storage section organizational subdivision of a storage type that groups together bins with similar feature from the perspective of putting away the stock and these sections have no control function so they just have to be defined in the system they can be given some numbers and a name that's it they don't do uh, they, do, they don't really control anything in the system important point here to notice that at least one storage section is mandatory per storage type this is a requirement from sap uh, that you have to create at least one storage type per uh, you have to create at least one storage section per storage type now to understand these storage bins so so far we have covered what is a warehouse what is the storage type what are storage sections the next and the last level is the storage bin so we would again use the same graphic uh, we know that within the storage type hirex we have two sections section 001 section 002 let's say we are talking about rack a which has eight levels and three stacks right so when companies create bins uh they can name them whatever they want they can call them top tom dick and harry or whatever but of course that doesn't make sense because when it is time uh, to pick something from that bin you should know where the, that bin is actually located so companies actually use a meaningful structure a meaningful template to name their bins which actually tells them the exact coordinate exact positioning of that bin within the uh, physical premises okay so an example could be something like this so it's uh, the bins in the rack A stack 01 can be named something like A0101, A0102, A0103, and likewise, right? So the first uh, part shows what is the rack number, then the second part shows which stack, and the third part uh, shows which level. So if you follow this, you can actually exactly locate the bin that you want. Okay, so this is how generally the bins are named uh, in any organization. So they should carry a meaningful name they should not be given a random name because if that happens then the entire purpose of uh, implementing sap warehouse management can actually go for a toss because then you cannot just locate your bins when it is time okay so uh, coming back to the little bit of text the storage bin is the smallest available unit of space in warehouse storage bins have no address uh, so their no, naming should actually indicate their positioning within the warehouse something that we have already discussed and Storage bins are unique within one storage type. So uh, Technically you cannot create more than one bin with the same name under one storage type uh, so Which also means technically you can create another bin with the same name under another storage type but uh, it is always recommended never to repeat the storage bin because uh, if you can somehow ensure that you never recreate the same uh, i mean another bin with the same name it ensures that there would never be an ambiguity so if you ask someone working in your warehouse please bring me this material from this bin that person exactly knows which bin are we talking about but if you have two bins with the same name of course there is a chance that the person might uh, be confused and pick the wrong material from the wrong bin Okay, so coming back to the warehouse structure that we uh, discussed some time back. And now that we have also discussed an example, this is how a warehouse structure can translate for us. At the top, we would have a warehouse, which would then have three storage types. That's a high racks, fixed bins, bulk storage. Uh, and then within high racks, we have 
two sections fragile items non fragile item and as i said one section is uh, mandatory for every storage type so fixed bin and bulk storage would have at least one section let's call it total section and then finally under these sections we create storage bins and as we discussed we try to give them a meaningful name you uh, following a template following a structure so that we can uh, locate the bin when it is time there are some important points that we must note from the perspective of warehouse structure as we know that uh, if we want to maintain a storage location as a warehouse, we have to create a warehouse uh, in the system and then assign it to the combination of plant and that particular storage location. But what is also possible is to assign the same warehouse number to the combination of the same plant and another storage location as well. So let's say if from this example, uh, the business requirement is that the raw materials storage location should also be storage uh, warehouse managed then we can assign the same warehouse number also to the combination of plant one two three and storage location two <coughs> sorry what is also possible is to assign the same warehouse to the combination of another plant and a storage location under this plant so in this example it's perfectly all right that you assign the same warehouse w01 to plant four five six and let's say any plan, any story location under this plant. Uh, this kind of situation, this kind of requirement might arise uh, in a situation where let's say two plants are physically located uh, at quite a distance from each other, but then somehow they share the same physical uh, facility for storing their goods. So from the IAM perspective, they would create different story locations for uh, this physical facility, but then at, at warehouse level, we can assign the same warehouse number to all the combinations of these plans and story locations should there be need. And of course, this is pretty obvious. We, uh, if we have different story locations under one plant and if the situation is for whatever reason, you uh, want to uh, manage them as two different warehouses, that's perfectly all right. Just assign different warehouse numbers to them and then they behave like totally different entities from each other. What is not possible is to assign the combination of a plant and a storage location to more than one warehouse, which to some extent also makes sense, but yeah, important to discuss that it's not possible. Okay, so with this, we uh, come to the end of the theory part. At the end of whatever we discussed, uh, let's say that we have this example, which we would now try to create in SAP system. So just uh, let's quickly discuss about this one at the at the top. Let's say we have a plant uh, Let's call it plant Zurich. This plant has two story locations one for raw material and one for finished goods So RM01 FG01 and this story location for finished goods has to be warehouse managed So uh, there would be a warehouse that would that we would need to create in the system uh, This warehouse has three storage types uh, Let's say HRK OPN and FXD for Hyrex open storage FX storage the storage type for Hyrex has two sections, FRG and REG for fragile items and regular items respectively. The other two storage types, uh, we have to create the one mandatory storage section uh, for these uh, storage types. And then finally for fragile and uh, regular sections under HRK, we have to create the bins, right? So uh, with this, we would go to the SAP system. Okay, so the transaction to start with is as PRO, which takes us to the implementation guide. Then we have to go to the enterprise structure, definition, logistics execution, and then define, copy, delete, check warehouse number. Click on this node. System gives you two options. The first one is to create a warehouse from the scratch. Uh, and another option is to copy an existing warehouse uh, as the base and then build upon that. So of course, SAP recommends that we should go for the second option uh, and we would do the same. So click on the second option and then click on this button, copy organization object, click on this one. Here, use warehouse 001. So this is the standard warehouse which SAP provides us with uh, as the starting point. So we would be using this as the reference. And then let's copy it to a new warehouse called W20, W20. System would give you some uh, pop-up messages. Just click, uh, keep on clicking on yes and okay, wherever it is needed. 
And as you can see, system is trying to copy a lot of settings from different tables and it is trying to prepare a base of this warehouse W20 for us using warehouse 001 as the reference. Okay, so let it run for some time. Everything goes well, then at the end we get this successful message, this information message saying that the warehouse number 001 has been successfully copied to W20. It says that it could do it, uh, it was actually not able to copy some of the number range objects, which is fine, uh, should not be a problem. Okay, so with this we come back and now we can go to the first option, which is define warehouse number, click on that one. And here we can check if the warehouse that we just created exist in the list or not. So I now see W20 is there. If you want, we can rename it. So let's call it Zurich Warehouse Save. It can be added to the same transport request. Okay, so with this, we are done with the definition of a new warehouse. So we have just created W20 in the system. The next activity is to assign this warehouse to the combination of plant and the story location. So for that, the path for that is enterprise structure, assignment, logistics execution, assign warehouse number to plant story location. Click on this one, new entries. And then here we enter the plant and the story location combination that we want to manage as a warehouse and then the warehouse number that we have just created. So the assignment is done. And with this, we are also done with the activities that we need to do under this node called enterprise structure. Okay, so we have defined a warehouse W20 and we have also assigned it to the combination of the plant and the storage location. The next activity is to create the three storage types for our warehouse. So if you remember, we have to create the high rack, the open storage and the fixed storage for uh, our warehouse. And the path for that is logistics execution, Warehouse management, master data, define storage type. Click on this one and this will actually uh, list down all these storage types belonging to different warehouses whatsoever exists in your system. Okay, now let's try to have a look. How is the situation for, sorry, the warehouse number is 2020. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, without we having to create any storage types, system does provide us with a base. So as you can see, there is already a list of existing storage types. Uh, if they fit into our requirement, we can simply start using these storage types. But for the sake of this tutorial, because we have to learn how we can create the storage types, I'll copy these uh, standard storage types and create new storage types, okay? So the first one we have to create is a storage type for high rack. So I copy this standard one for high rack. So click on copy and let's call it HRK and give it a different name so that we can differentiate. Hi rec one, hit enter. Okay, and save it. Add it to the same transport. Okay, now again, look for the existing storage types. We also need one storage type for open storage. So we copy the SAP standard. Hit enter, save it. And then we needed one for fixed pin storage. So we copy this one and hit enter, save it. Okay, so what we have done, we have created three storage types under storage uh, under warehouse W20. We have created HRK, uh, FXT, and OPN. So, okay. Now the next step is to create the storage sections. And if you remember, it is mandatory to create at least one storage section under each storage type. So let's first create them for the storage type OPN. So click on new entries, warehouse W20, OPN, and we can actually give it any name, but the uh, standard way is to just give this name 001 uh, and call it total section. Let's also do it for the fixed storage type. Okay, so we have entered the uh, total section for the storage type open and fixed. 
but now when it comes to high racks if you remember we need two sections one for the fragile items and one for the regular items let's also make an entry for uh, those storage sections so under w20 for high racks there is one section which is fragile and then similarly non fragile okay so we have created four sections in total let's put it the casing save it uh, one thing to note here uh, is uh, as we also discussed in the theory part storage sections do not have any control so we just give them some number uh, and then some name but as you can see there is no length button or something uh, which using which we can create some storage section specific settings so there's there's nothing that we uh, do beyond this uh, when it is about storage sections okay so we are also done with the creation of storage sections the next is storage bins storage bins uh, although are a part of the uh, warehouse structure but they are not the configuration data in uh, they are not configurable in SAP they are more of a master data which we can uh, create using the SAP easy access menu we really do not have to use the transaction as PRO for that okay so the transaction to create the storage bin is LS01 N hit enter this is the uh, UI for the transaction to create a storage bin we have to enter the storage the warehouse number and let's say we are creating a bin under storage type hrk and let's give it uh, some name hit enter okay at this point in time let's try to save this and system forces us to enter storage section and this is why at least one storage section under each storage type is mandatory right so we enter this hit enter we still get another error message entry w20 hrk 001 oh yeah sorry it should have been frg hit enter now we get this message saying fill in all required entry fields and system is asking me to enter a value for the storage bin type and uh, this is of course something that we have not discussed yet uh, but it would be interesting to, to quickly understand why system is forcing me to uh, enter a value for this one this depends on the storage type under which I am creating the storage bin. So let's quickly go back to the node where we define the storage types. So logistics execution, warehouse management, master data, define storage type, open this one. And position for our warehouse and the storage type. Select this one, click on details. And as you can see, there are many controls which uh, are present in the system specific to a storage type we would try to understand all of them in subsequent tutorials but for now among all these fields one field is sut check active what it means is that for this storage type uh, whenever i am storing a material i want to do something called sut check which of course we will discuss later but this check uh, makes it mandatory that for each bin that we create in this storage type should be assigned to a bin type and which is why system is forcing me to enter a value of storage bin type when I'm creating the bin under this storage type okay so for the sake of it uh, so that system allows me to create the storage bin I'll remove this checkbox this control for storage type HRK let me save it and now with this change if I go to the transaction to create the storage bin system should now allow me to save it Yes, so as you can see in the status bar, I see a successful message that storage bin 010101 has been created. And now uh, with this, I can actually create as many bins I want. Save it. Let's say now I want to create a bin in the third level, which actually be belongs to the storage section regular because this is a non-fragile item. I can do that. Let's also create one more. okay so uh, with this i can create as many bins i want under each section of any storage type uh, just for the sake of it let's also create one and or opn uh, and let's call it test bin 
storage section as you remember we have one total section for this storage type save it and similarly we can also create one for fixed let's call it fixed pin 01 and the storage section is mandatory okay so uh, here you have seen that we can create storage pins uh, for different sections under different storage types now one obvious question that should have popped up in uh, your mind is that when we talk about a warehouse and especially uh, a storage type where we have the high racks we generally are talking about thousands of bins and so in that case is it really feasible to create all these bins one by one using this transaction ls01 and uh, the answer is of course not uh, there are many ways uh, that we can use to mass create the storage bins but one very interesting tool that sap has provided is the mass creation of storage bins using the templates the uh, structures which is something that we would discuss in the next tutorial uh, but for now within this tutorial uh, uh, as far as the demo is concerned we are done so a very quick recap starting from the theory part we tried to understand why do we need any warehousing solution at all uh, we then had a look at the organizational structure of a warehouse in SAP. We tried to understand what is the storage type, what is the storage section, what are storage bins. Uh, and then finally, we also created the structure of a warehouse W20, a sample warehouse in the SAP system. Okay, so with this, I thank all of you for your time and your uh, participation. And uh, I welcome all the feedback, all your comments in the comment section in the lower section. Uh, you may want to subscribe to this channel because uh, I would be uploading many similar tutorial videos in the near future So if you subscribe then of course you get the notifications uh, Until then I wish you good luck learning WM. It is a very interesting topic uh, and uh, My personal favorite too. I actually have worked uh, in at least three uh, modules I had worked in th uh, three different modules before coming to WM, but since the time I started working with WM, I never felt like going back to any of them. So it's actually quite interesting. Uh, but yes, it, it does demand some uh, interest, uh, at least at the beginning. And then once you are into it, then you start, you know, uh, finding it more and more easy with time. Okay, so I wish you happy learning and see you later. Take care. Bye bye.